heard me speak yet. But as soon as they do, I guarantee you they're going to start screaming. Anyways, welcome back to another exciting Lord Duckman production up here on Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. We are working on the Candy Spider go-kart. <laughs> working on the Candy Spider go-kart here. This has the wrong engine in it. This thing was just built this way by the previous, previous owner. And it has nothing but issues. And we're going to go through some of the issues in this video. But also, this engine, since I got it to sputter and fire that last time in the last video, I have not seen it run since. I tried to start it up for another friend of mine. I can't get it to spark. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It's got other issues, and we're going to try to sort through that today because we got some brand new parts coming up from the HIPAA store. And we'll demonstrate those as well coming up. But before we get to any of that, let me show you a few things on this go-kart as to just why I got it so cheap. <laughs> it's got a lot of issues, guys. Wrong engine. Uh, hmm. And there's this. Hmm. Seriously? Uh, oh no. Oh. What the f is this? Oh, the throttle cable's garbage. Uh-oh. Trailer hitch. Sticking out that way. That's oh. connected to nothing. Nice dashboard. But I know that despite all of the problems that this go-kart has, the HIPAA store will be there to get this engine running in tip-top shape. The HIPAA store is a company that sells lawnmower and other outdoor equipment parts, and even has parts for some go-karts. And from the HIPAA store today, we have a complete engine tune-up kit that will be featured in this video. The kit includes a new carburetor, all the gaskets, a fuel filter, a pair of spark plugs, and even a run switch and other electrical items. So please, Check out the HIPAA store from the affiliate links down below in my video description because when you support the HIPAA store, you're also supporting my YouTube channel. Thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video, and thanks again to everyone that's watching. Don't forget to linky likey, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be back right after that intro. undeniably it's ugly with a very unorthodox shape which we will be correcting hey well it stopped raining so we're back out here got everything ready to go I'm gonna start tearing this engine up and uh, I believe this engine is a um, Chinese clone uh, predator to be specific the labels are all pulled off of the thing so they're not there you know, looks like it's another GX uh, 270 something clone three 20 clones, something, something. It's, it's a Honda clone. Predator engine anyway. We're gonna get this thing running today. Um, when I tried to get it started for one of my friends, I just could not get the thing to spark. I did not know why, it was starting to get dark at the time, so I just kind of gave up on it, but uh, it was not running. And today the goal is not only to get it running, but to get it running right, so that way it idles properly and then it revs up via the throttle. It was missing some throttle linkage and stuff before, so I made it some new pieces that attaches to the governor. The throttle cable, however, is rusted solid, so this can actually all come right off of this, this machine. This is all garbage. This just needs to go away. Not even gonna be a part of this anymore. I don't want it. Wow, what a terrible routing disaster too here. This is just terrible, all right. All this electrical tape wrapped around everything. Well, that's a story for another day. This is not even the correct engine on here. <laughs> all this is going to get uh, running, modified, and then probably, I'll switch it onto this cart. We'll see if it'll fit and see what I can do. Anyway, that's the plan. In addition to that, this has a busted chain. So we might get this fixed later in the video because I'll be going over to Ranchero 302 Me's house later tonight. And I'll be having another go-kart competition, so I need to fix this chain. But look at how thin this stuff is. It's no wonder that it broke. And it's also stiff as a board. And I mean, I lubricated it and I had it working. I hear you. And I had it working pretty well, but it went stiff again. So anyway, the whole thing needs to be replaced. That's a secondary chain. There's also a primary chain right there. We'll get that fixed too. But for now, let's focus on the engine and see what we can get this thing doing. All right, you guys? All right, remember, no spark. That's where we started out at. 
We got the ignition here disconnected, and that's how this wire works. It must be disconnected from chassis ground. If it touches the ground, it shuts the engine off. That's its only purpose, to shut off the engine. So it needs to be floating in space, just like that, and not attached to anything. Not to the run switch, not to the oil shutoff switch. In fact, this entire system down here, wiring, all this can be eliminated. You do not need this in order to run this engine. And this switch wire should be going to a switch up on the dashboard. Or even if you want to go nuts, you could put it in your seat. So that way when you stand up or fall out of the go-kart, the engine shuts off. Anyway, yeah. That's where we're at. It was not making sparks, so I need to check and see if the wire is grounding out against anything else. You know what? I can't see it, but I can feel it. There's a spot under there where it was vibrating against the chassis and it wore through it. Yeah, as it, again, you can't see it, but I can feel it. It's way up in there. All right, just with the wire repositioned, I just pulled the sleeve off of it. You know what? This sleeve would solve the problem. Let's just push that down on that wire. Push it down as far as it'll go. Push it real good. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm gonna use two hands for that. All right, these engines are real simple, guys. If you can get this thing running, you can fix pretty much any lawnmower engine. That's really all it is, it's just a single cylinder lawnmower engine. Where did that wire go in the sleeve here? I may have to pop this cover off because this is like a, it's like a fabric mesh here, which, yeah, it should be wrapped around that wire so that way things like this, like this vibration problem that we seem to be experiencing here that caused this damage, shouldn't be allowed to happen. Pull this thing back like a dramatic foreskin that it is. Oh, come on. I don't want to have to take off the uh, cooling shroud to get this thing to go on, but I might have to. Because if I can't get the wire out the end of it, then it serves no purpose to me, right? Because then it's a hindrance. It's not helping. All right, well, I guess we're pulling the cover off. Hope I can get to all the bolts easily. Yeah, yeah, easily enough, I suppose. <laughs> All right. All right, we gotta take the carbonator off this out delicately. This back this comes right off. There we go. Here comes our carburetor. Not gonna need that anymore. I will put it on a shelf, and I will clean it out later. This is the uh, art plug holder plastic bits. That gasket looks good. I'm not going to tear that off. It looks fine where it's at, so leave it be. Okay. This cover, I removed the bolts from it previously. It should come out now. Here it is. Here's our coil. Let me get you guys closer so you can see more about that. All right, these things are really, really simple. These are magneto-based driven ignitions. There is no CDI box. There's nothing fancy about it. There's two wires that comes out of this coil. There's the skinny wire, which only has one purpose, and that's to shut the engine off. Not to turn it on, to shut it off. And that's this wire here that uh, was rubbing the inside because this sleeve that's on this wire was riding up on it and it vibrated against the frame and it wore through the insulation on the wire. We'll get this thing down, there we go. Fantastic, that's the way it needs to be. Now we'll feed this back up from where it went. And there's other wire that comes out of it. This is your spark plug wire and this is it. This is the whole ignition system, right here. Simple Just as Just a coil that's driven by the magnet on the flywheel. As this thing comes around, it sends a charge to it. There's no points on these engines. I mean, this thing is as simple as they get, really as simple as they get. Now anyway, that's all there is to it here. It does get compression. Yeah. It did seem to fire up the other day just fine. This will probably give us a spark though, because yeah, that wire was touching frame. And that's the reason why we had nothing. Well, before we put anything back together, I guess we gotta kinda put this back on before we can try anything, don't we? Okay. 
Okay, this is our run switch over here. You know what? I don't think we're gonna use that anymore. Yeah, this can actually be knocked out of here. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna <laughs> take it right out of place. You say, oh duck man, how are you gonna shut the engine off? Well, we're gonna have a proper run switch up on the dashboard. And we'll hook it into what we've got. There we go. It goes on there just like that. We've got our bolts to go back in this shroud. This is the stuff that you guys didn't see me take apart a minute ago. The reason for that was because the camera I hit the record button, but I guess I didn't push it hard enough. So you guys didn't see me removing bolts, but that's kind of boring anyway, isn't it? I mean, it's kind of boring watching me put them in, but people want to see me go step by step, and they want to hear a little bit of my creative dialogue along the way. Little anecdotes, life stories, the little things that I share. Because if you're a fan of mine, and you like to hear that kind of stuff. If you're not a fan, well, I can understand why it might frustrate you. Don't tighten these too much, because these will not strip, but break off. <laughs> these bolts are small. That one's gonna be requiring a ratchet, because I can't get in there. And down below. This is one of those things that whoever had the bright idea to weld this engine in here the way they did should have planned ahead to make sure that you can reach all of the bolts very easily with the same tool. You don't have to fight with things to get things apart or put things back together. That's what I would have done anyway, but that's just me. And I'm the duck man. So I do things different. I actually think ahead. I don't like what I'm doing. Maybe there's a reason I did it, right? <laughs> Here's my new HIPAA right, spark plug. Go. It is that size. Hopefully you can see that. BP6E. This works in all Predator engines or all Honda clone engines as far as I know. It's been pre-gapped as well. I checked it. It's currently set to uh, three hundredths or 0 .03 for those of you that don't know and that's the inches of course. So anyway, let's see if we get a spark on this. If we get lucky and I think we're gonna get lucky because I think we found our problem and that was in that wire. But this sucker should spark now, so let's get you zoomed in down there so you guys can see this one. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, well we can put that spark plug back in now. Now ordinarily I wouldn't drive it in with a uh, impact like this, but I do this to drive people crazy. <laughs> Duck man, you know you can strip that out. Of course I can. All right, that's good. We are sparking. Let's go ahead and get to the carburetor install. The carburetor doesn't look too bad on the outside. It actually doesn't look bad at all. It stinks though. I mean, it certainly smells of bad gas. And I'm curious as to just how much rust and crust is inside of it. Ooh, I can see it already. Yeah, it's dripping. Take this bowl off. Oh. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> nice and thick and oily. Oh, yeah, it stinks. Okay. Well, we're just going to put this back in here, and I'm going to throw that directly into my parts cleaning tank. Yeah, it's already all, all over me. Look, at it's actually like... It's like sticky it's like old old grease like in a kitchen when it gets gummy okay let's get that out of here gross all right let's install our brand new HIPAA carburetor first we have our 
prophylactic spacer here. This probably isn't necessary, but for whatever it's worth, it keeps the carburetor cool. Gives you a little bit of a heat insulator. And we have a gasket. And the gasket, by the way, that was on there first, I saw no reason to remove that. It actually looked in pretty good shape, so I left it where it was. Here's our brand new HIPAA carburetor. This goes on here just like that. Then there's one more gasket that goes on the tail end of it. I don't know if that's the right one. Nope, that's the one that goes on first. That is not the gasket. This is the gasket that goes on here next. I think it goes on like that based on the location of the holes in it. Yep, that's correct. All right, then, no, we've already got the choke lever on, actually. I did that earlier when I was recording a box opening video with B. Well, before I forget, let's put this throttle linkage on here. Should just press down on the hole. There it goes. And then this, if I'm not mistaken, connected somehow into here. Don't drop it, dog man. Uh oh. <laughs> like this. This is garbage. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Hmm. Alright, there it is. We've got our air box here, which is clean. Down inside the area where the air needs to be clean, it actually is, so that's good. We need to pull these uh, switches back. And you know what, before we get in here, it's also going to be really hard to connect the fuel line unless I do it now. And we're going to use this old fuel line that we have. It's a little stiff, but I think it'll get us going for today because I need to go and get some new fuel line. But since this engine isn't staying on here anyway, this will be fine for today, right guys? Alright, here we go. On the fuel line. Get that routed up and out of the way. All right, good. Now we'll put our air box on. Air box goes on just like this. Again, with those levers for the choke and for the fuel switch, pull them backwards. Otherwise, you won't be able to um, get them lined up with the holes there. What's going on here? Huh? Oh, it came out of its home. Get back in there, you. All right. It's in there. That's why I was having trouble getting it on here. There we go. Alright, then we have two 10 millimeter nuts, which I'm going to impact them on. Again, making everybody yell. Oh, duck man, don't do that. What's going on here? Oh, duck man, you already stripped it out. Actually, I think I just had really bad aim. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. I just missed the bolt. All right. There it is. Got one more bolt that goes in from the top here. Usually I leave these out. This just helps to stabilize the air cleaner. But often I find that they use a different size tool. But because this one uses the same size tool, we're going to run it in. All right, we're good and solid. We'll put our air cleaner on. And then we'll put our lid on, which has a line that runs through it, some kind of breather. Not sure exactly what it's for, but it's there. One of those things I'll research. All right, this cover can be a little persnickety. In fact, I'm putting it on backwards. That's why it's persnickety, duck man, because if you put it on backwards, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's persnickety. It likes to be exactly put on one way and one way only. I think the cover might have shrunk or the base might have expanded. It's a lot of trouble to get this thing to go down. Oh, 
There it is. And it's on there. Fantastic. Now we got to work on the fuel supply. Is the fuel going to come out of that gas tank? And when I drilled a little bit in there and tried to turn it on the other day, nothing came out of the little spigot on the bottom. Now I don't know if it's because the cart was tipped the wrong way and the fuel didn't fill enough. I don't know. Nonetheless, we're going to pull out the petcock down below under there, right there. We're going to unscrew him and we're going to see if there's a filter or something that I can clean out. And might just need a little carburetor cleaner on the inside because it might be gummed up too, but right. I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Now, if you loosen this thing, I think it's an 18. If it's not, then it's a 19. Good thing I brought that with me too. There it is. And loosen. Wonder if any gunk's gonna drip out of this. Probably not. Yeah, nothing came out of it. That is pretty dirty though. This is the uh, regular inlet and then down in there somewhere is a reserve inlet and it appears that it's all caked up. So I need to get the compressor out or maybe I could easily blow through some carburetor cleaner so I'll give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Let's see. On is up, off is forward, reserve is down. So okay, we know how that works. Here we go, we'll put reserve to down and then we'll see if it blows through. I'm hoping so. It did. You now you can see where the inlet is on the bottom. And this doesn't have any sort of filter on it inside the tank. So that means this thing is going to be prone to picking up all kinds of debris. Especially if I put any tank liners or anything in or if it has any excessive amount of rust. Because what will happen is it will clog up the inlet. Okay, here we go. Looks like we're flowing again. All right, I think that's good. Let's reinstall it. Man, that was really dirty in there. That was super crusted. All right, put our fuel switch back in. Hopefully that gasket's still good that after I upset it, that it doesn't start leaking. That's the kind of way that these things usually go. <laughs> That's where it needs to be. We'll turn it in the off position. And then we're gonna try putting a little fuel in it to see if she flows. All right, here we go. Hopefully it doesn't leak, despite me spilling everywhere here. Oh man, I make a mess. <laughs> that's enough though, that's a couple quarts in there. Probably not even a whole liter. Right, make sure we're not leaking underneath here. fuel switch was not perfectly in the off position and it is dripping a little bit out the bottom and that's good because that's more than what it was doing before. All right, let's turn it into the reserve position and see if it flows. <laughs> Nothing but dripping. Might need to be cleaned out a little better. All right. That's an issue. Anyway, I just flicked it, we'll fix and then it. it started flowing, and then it stopped again. That's odd. The off position is not truly an off position. <laughs> we'll have to remember that. I'll probably put an inline uh, fuel switch in there, and that'll solve that problem from here forward. All right, let's connect that fuel line. Look what I found, a nice fuel line that had a fuel switch in it. Happens to be the same one that's on my other go-kart. This came off of uh, one of the lawnmowers I had out in the yard. Anyway, I replaced the uh, filter that's in it with a nice HIPAA filter, the brand new one that came with the kit. And we're gonna get the sucker installed on here. And I think after this, we should have a fuel supply. Your gurgling sounds awful there, buddy. Yeah, that collar works good on you. You can't scream so loud. <laughs> I see Cheeky's going under the Volkswagen. I gotta stop her because it's oily under there and she doesn't need to eat some of the oily dirt. That wasn't Cheeky that was under there, it was Boomer. All I saw was tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get this clamp up 
down here. And we'll just make sure we get flow through this thing. Right, flip it back in your reserve. There it goes. Now it's flowing. Okay, good. Very good. Turn this off. Hook it up to our carburetor on this side. Turn this on. And it should fill that carb. All right, we'll give it just a minute. I think the outlet on the tank under there is cracked. So I'm probably going to have to um, take the tank out and possibly weld a new bung on the bottom there with the threaded thing. And instead of having a switch, I'll just use an outlet. And I'll run it directly into the fuel line filter and I'll just use an inline switch. I don't need that petcock. I don't have to be there. No, we'll go a different route instead because it does appear to be leaking. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong there. I think it's probably just rusted through and it just it fatigued and broke. So anyway, it's a minor fuel leak. It drips once in a while. You can see the fuel line is actually a little wet. So I guess I need to correct that. It's not going to happen now. What's going to happen now, though, is we're going to try to give it a start. And that means we got to get down here and put the fuel switch to the on position. And then start, run, run as forwards for choke. Okay, should be ready to start. Let's go ahead and put you up on the tripod and you guys can see just what happens. All right, make sure our Shutoff wire is not contacting anything at all. I'm gonna put this, you know what? I'm gonna run it right through this bolt and out the side. There we go, it's floating in space. Grab our pull start and. simply touch that wire to ground and that was our problem with the wire being nicked up under there but this jacket is now over it properly that shouldn't happen anymore but we got a runner we got a runner this engine is not gonna stay on here so that just means I gotta find another project to put it on right guys <laughs> special thanks to the HIPAA store for this one please use the links down below in the video description because uh, when you support HIPAA using those links you're actually supporting my YouTube channel you know, big special thanks again. Just big special thanks. I can't believe it started up with one one pull. In fact, you know what? Let's do it again. One pull. It pulls easy. <laughs> really easy. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, I guess we'll jump on the next project. But uh, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Licky, like, you comment, and subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back with another video coming up very soon. Thanks for watching. There you go. Oh, I should have had the HIPAA logo in there a whole while. <laughs> it's all sweaty. That's why I didn't stick it on your head. <laughs> Don't do that. Can't see the logo either. <laughs>
right now. <laughs>